Happy National Timeout Day. Welcome back to part two of our videos, just bringing awareness to the importance of the timeout process and hopefully giving you the information that you need to really follow best practice, to do what's best for your patients in the timeout process and really know what's required and what's a recommendation and how you can improve if you need to. Um, if you are looking for more information and more detail, you can check out the Joint Commission's Universal Protocol and you can also check out the AORN um, guidelines for team communication. They go into great detail on the timeout in section five, so that's also a very good resource for you to check out if you want more information. In this video, we are going to look at universal protocol and really look at what they say should be in your timeout process. And that starts with when the timeout should occur. According to the Joint Commission's Universal Protocol, the timeout should occur immediately before starting the invasive procedure or making the incision. This really means that the best place for the timeout is after the patient is prepped, after they're draped, and right before the incision. That's your last chance to get it right. Right patient, right side, right procedure. Everything needs to be correct before we make an incision. And trying to do the timeout when the surgeon's walking in the room or you're trying to, they're trying to put their gown and gloves on or there's a lot of chaos and, and things going on, that's just not the best time to do a timeout because everybody can't pay attention. The patient's straight. We're ready to cut and we pause. We take a minute, make sure everything is correct. The music is off. Everyone is standing still. Everyone is engaged and paying attention. And all of this makes sure that we are doing the right procedure, the right patient, on the right part of the body. Patient safety at its best. So that is really the ideal place for your timeout to occur. They also say that a designated member of the team should start the timeout and your timeout process should be standardized. This is just so that it's consistent. Everyone knows how the process is gonna work. Everyone knows their role. And if it's standardized, you're not confused when you go into a room about what's gonna happen or who might be starting it because we have a designated person and we always do it the same way. Also, the timeout involves the immediate members of the procedure team, the individual performing the procedure, your anesthesia provider, your circulating nurse, your surgical technologist, or your scrub nurse, and any other participants who will be actively participating in the procedure from the beginning. Everyone needs to be included in the timeout process. All relevant members of the procedure team also actively communicate during the timeout. Introduce themselves. Everyone participate. Say what's going on. What do you have on your back table? What medications are hanging? Um, what is our fire risk? All these things that we can communicate. Are there any issues or things that we need to be aware of? This is the time to communicate those and really make sure everyone's on the same page. Now, at a bare minimum, the regulatory requirement says that your team members have to agree on the following the correct patient, the correct site, and the procedure to be done. This is the bare minimum of what needs to be included in your timeout. This is the requirement that must be followed every time you do a timeout. Also, if the same patient is having two or more procedures and the person performing the procedure changes, then you need to do a timeout again when the new provi provider comes in and before you start the next procedure. And then documentation of the completion of the timeout should be done consistently every time you do a timeout, make sure that it's documented. So on this National Timeout Day, I hope that we have helped you gain a better understanding of the history of the timeout that we talked about in part one. And then also in this video, really understanding how you can incorporate best practices into your timeout process. Keep up the great work and happy National Timeout Day.